one of the things that I think is the best uh, way that I can think to like sort of solve a lot of these societal issues and you know, divides is to have um, like when people, when we used to have a draft in this country, right? Like even when my dad was younger, you know, he had to try to avoid the draft to Vietnam, but he joined the army reserves and he had to go to boot camp in wherever Georgia. And, you know, you're with all kinds of people, people of all different places. You're all, and you know, this, you're just thrown in with them, people from all different, you know, places, backgrounds, colors, what religions, and you're all doing the same thing. Cause you're in the army and, um, and, and you're exposed to people, right? You're, expo- you, you start to see the humanity and all the different people yeah. outside of your own bubble from the community that you grew up in. So if, and I, I'm not, I'm not saying we need to have a draft, but I think if we could have some, and Israel has this, or we could have some kind of program in this country where, for example, kids graduating high school have to do like a year of some sort of public service. And maybe that means teaching in a school. Maybe that means joining the army, the park service, uh, you know, working at a, uh, whatever it is, whatever you want to do, right? Like this is a way for you to get experience doing something, being exposed to different people, having like training um, and mixing people up. Yeah, We got to mix people up in this country because everyone is so, especially now, yeah, so in our bubbles, in our communities, we only see the faces around us. And if those are only white faces, if those are only black faces, we're not, we don't, we're not, really seeing we can't walk in each other's shoes because we have no all we know is from you know tv and youtube and whatever um you need to actively kind of like stir up the the melting pot and, yeah and that's that's the only thing i can see and i i don't know you know i think it would be beneficial in so many ways right like you could have training programs you could have um you could help communities you could um you know, it would encourage public service, people to go into public service a- as like an actual career, like in a positive way. They would get paid, right? Like this would be a paid thing. Um, and then you decide after that if you want to go to college um, and what you want to do after that and meeting different people. I mean, this is this is a way to kind of create more opportunity. And I remember like Clinton talking about this at one time and the, the people have talked about it like a mandatory public service kind of thing. But, you know, it's 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 hard to take root because that and think that's what socialists do. Well, it's <laughs> it's it's kind of scary to me if you look at the companies that have had the biggest growth over the last year. It's like okay, Peloton, of which I bought one. There's a Peloton treadmill over there, so that means if I work out at home, I can pick the instructor that looks just like me. Yep. I never have to go to the gym. I never have to interact right. in the locker room with somebody who's poorer than me or richer than me or looks right. different than me, right? right? Then you look at Facebook skyrocketing valuation. Cool. Facebook's all about putting you in your echo chamber yep. and confirmation yep. bias. And then you look at Apple and Apple's like, oh, I'm going to completely distract you from the real world yep. and put you on your phone 24-7. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. it's crazy. It's crazy. that. And what's funny is I think it affects wealthier people more than socio economically challenged people because you can basically, as you mentioned, you know, Amazon Prime and everything, you can opt in into your own bubble and be completely taken care of yep. now. Yep. And that's that's really scary because I, I remember, you know, I was in Fort Riley, Kansas um, when I was in the Army from 97 to 2000. And I honestly, truly cannot remember all but like one incident that kind of fired up because of any type of racial tension. And on my floor, it was like 50% black, 50% white. Well, not exactly 50-50, but every ethnicity was there. And nobody gave a shit. It was just like, we're all gonna drink together. We're all gonna get in trouble together. Lots of trouble together. Um, But uh, nobody cared. And I I just, I feel like it's gotten hypersensitive over the last, you know, call it 10 years, or maybe to your point, this is just, you're getting older and wiser and it's like, get off my grass. You know, generation thinks the world is going to shit in a handbasket. So I I try to talk about this with my mom all the time she's in her 70s and she'll be like well you know i mean i did live through like an amour and the nixon years and she's like things were pretty shitty right then. and people yeah. didn't trust the government and they didn't trust the media and so but she said nothing's ever like she's like i've not seen anything like trump and any you know that is on another level but it's not like we can't we have experienced these types of things before it's yeah. just i think it's the technology and the social media that are you know putting people into these boxes and then and regurgitating the same messages over and over and over. Right. I mean, I, I'm a victim of it too. So are you. So Everybody. Everybody. My kids are, you know, like 
they watch Minecraft videos and then all they see are Minecraft videos. And it's like, you know, these people that they think are their friends who are these like assholes making a million dollars on YouTube. <laughs> right. Playing Minecraft.